I titled today's Neville Goddard Conversation, Be Conscious, Awaken from the Dream. So we have been discussing this idea in last week when we talked about the two key elements from the master key system. What we want is conscious use of the our imagination. We want to decide and commit to how we genuinely see ourselves to be in our imagination. And we want to do it in a way that saturates the subconscious mind so that we can allow ourselves to express authentically. This brings forth our creative endeavor, whatever we saw in our imagination, our innovation, and so forth. Also brings forth a feeling of bliss as related to Thursday's video. And so I want to share with you some reference experience here in relation to that video that I released, the Master Key System, which was almost two hours long. So that's the beautiful thing about making these videos is that the very act of discussing and sharing my experiences and reflecting with you on this information in a way where I really identify with what I'm communicating it's a form of affirmation that further stimulates my subconscious mind and recreates more of those kinds of experiences. This is what I've noticed. I've noticed a lot of synchronicities that are a result of the videos that I was putting together. For example, with the master key system, when I released the video and we were talking a lot about exercises of imagination, and we're going to talk about two over here that Neville shares that to complement the huge array of exercises that Charles Hanel gives, which are really designed to help us, you could say, let go of the five sensory experience during our imaginal activity. When we go into our imaginal workshop and we construct our innovation or how we really want to be. Because it's up to the work of the subconscious mind in ways we might not know to carry out the instructions and it does so automatically. It happens automatically. We move in that direction. Things move in the direction of reflecting that what we saw in our imagination, the vision realized. So last night before going to sleep, I decided that I was going to have an invisible council with Charles Hanel. Some of you might be familiar with the works of Napoleon Hill. Certainly, I bring it up a lot. In Thinking Real Rich, he talks about how he would have an invisible council before going to sleep. A very creative way of working with his imagination to embody certain characteristics into his identity. And he would discuss how he would actually embody those through the process. He shares it in Thinking Grow Rich. As a matter of fact, I did a video on it, and I'll put a link in the description of the invisible council process. And... What I did was I decided I was going to have a conversation with Charles Hanel about his imaginal activities, exercises, and another important aspect in which he was aiming to cultivate through that book, which was keeping your attention on what is relevant and in harmony in relation to your vision, both in imagination and on the day-to-day -day journey to realizing your vision. So the scene played out in a room where there was a meeting table couple chairs and he was there in front of me and I started to ask him some questions in reflection to some of the things that I talked about in that master key system video and I started to get some responses and I did it in a state akin to sleep which was right before going to sleep and I noticed that every now and then my mind would drift onto other things I would think about maybe something that happened during the day and then something interesting would happen that never happened before he would respond in my own imagination and say, hey, where's your attention going? And I'll say, oh, yeah, yeah, we were talking about something. And then so we'd continue the conversation and he would reveal very interesting perspectives. Now, this was all happening via my own imagination in state akin to sleep, via the subconscious mind's ways of doing things that I don't understand logically, but the insights and perspectives that were discussed and shared were ones that I felt I was integrating. I actually felt myself becoming that which he was suggesting. And 
The interesting part about it was it happened a few times. My mind would wander onto other things and I would forget that I was having the invisible counsel and he would awaken me back to that reality. And I was thinking to myself, what is happening? It seems that he keeps bringing me back into this room. And yes, the stuff that he's sharing with me is very insightful and I want to integrate this, but this has never happened to me before. Normally I would just get out of it and stay out of it. I noticed then that I wasn't able to wake up. I wasn't actually able to leave this invisible council session. Now, I wasn't afraid of it. I just thought it was very interesting because it seemed like he, at a certain point, knew that my attention was going to go onto something else and he would be able to predict it. And then he would actually have conversations about me regarding the importance of imagination and attention in imagination till I integrate that which I am imagining. So I said, wow, that's uh, very interesting. And I ended up falling asleep to that. And then I woke up the next day and I actually saw the very things that he was talking about and the very things that I was integrating in my imagination actually playing out in my behaviors and conversations that I was having with others. So thus is the power of imagination and the imaginal scenes. I want to discuss two of them that are also in contribution to the Charles Hanel video that Neville shares, which are very similar, which helps us maintain this kind of attention in our imagination. So isn't that interesting how you can go into an imaginal scene and the imaginal scene actually wants you to be there? You go into an invisible council with Charles Hanel. He actually has the conversation with me. And then as I'm let's say, leaving the imaginal scene for whatever my mind is wandering, he's actually bringing me back into the imaginal scene. I'm like, wow, the powers of the subconscious mind and the powers of working with imagination and the practice of keeping your attention on is actually expressing itself in the imaginal scene prior to going to sleep. So Neville says, So I bring you a message to make you conscious Man must awake from the dream where he is simply an automation. He moves like a machine. Then he begins to awake. And when he awakes, then he is not that man at all that he seemingly in the past played for eternity. He awakes into a new being, a new man. So what I realize is that when we awaken in imagination to that what we consciously desire to experience, this world, which is a reflection of that which we imagine, ends up playing out the theater to reflect that imaginal scene. This actually reminds me of the lucid dream that I had, which I shared in one of my videos. I'll put a link in the description to it in which I would try to awaken from my lucid dream and then I would end up in another dream. And then I would try to get up from that dream or awaken from that dream and I'd end up in another dream, in another dream. I actually felt like I was stuck there for some reason. Similar to this uh, session, Invisible Council session. Didn't scare me because I realized that I'm safe in mind, as we learned from the Kabbalion. In the mother-father mind, all children are safe and at home. So nothing to fear in my mind. These are all, we could say, lucid and imaginal activities that are in harmony and in contribution to revealing how I really want to be, which is my intention. This all starts with the intention and the conscious decision and commitment that you are that person. Then all plays out as the theater, plays out in my theatrical way in which I believe reality to work which is uh, heavily influenced by the Think and Grow Rich philosophy in which I studied it very deeply in 2004. So in relation, Neville states, so as long as we change the memory of the imaginal act that had hardened into fact, that imaginal act, even though it had hardened into fact, will be transformed. Thus, like an echo, it will transform our present and future. So why don't you take on this challenge starting tonight? As you are lying down in your bed, close your eyes and revise your day, starting at the moment you went to bed all the way to the moment you got out of bed in the morning. Do this every day for a whole month and see the miracles happening in your life. 
Now, this is very interesting to me because I'm a very conversational person. And, you know, I've been sharing this. Uh, words, conversation, very important for me. I love communication. And so I tend to do things more from the perspective of invisible counsel in which I'm having the conversation. And so Neville is speaking of facilitating the changes as a result of imagining your day to go a certain way. What I found works for me is to have the conversation with someone in my imagination in a way that facilitates how I really want to be. Now, he actually gives two versions that are similar to this exercise. One seems to be more like a way of practicing doing this in your imagination, and the other one is akin to revising. So let's look at number one, and this is from Power of Awareness. He says, to aid in mastering the control of your attention, practice this exercise. Another thing I would say is it's kind of interesting how I tend to automatically move towards certain quotes for these videos as a result of what I imagine prior to going to sleep. Because the conversation with Charles Hanel was related to imagination and attention. So he's saying here, to aid in mastering the control of your attention, and that was what actually Charles Hanel was teaching me in my imagination. Very interesting. So Neville says, night after night, before you drift off to sleep, which was when I was having my imaginal invisible counsel, he says, strive to hold your attention on the activities of the day in reverse order. Focus your attention on the very last thing you did, that is, getting to bed, and then move it backwards in time over the events until you reach the first event of the day, which is getting out of bed in the morning. He says this may not be an easy exercise, but just as specific exercises greatly help in developing specific muscles, this will greatly help in developing the muscle of your attention. Your attention must be developed, controlled, and concentrated in order to change your concept of yourself successfully and thereby change your future. So we could see this as a variation to one of the exercises that I had learned in the Master Key System, which I shared, where Charles Hanel's version was essentially reverse engineering how a ship was built. And then he actually had another exercise where he talked about the plant all the way from the origins within the seed into flowering. These are exercises that are designed to keep our attention in the imaginal world. What I notice as a result of practicing those exercises is I have way more of a vivid imagination. It felt before going to sleep last night when I was having that invisible counsel, it felt like that was a real conversation. It was an actual conversation that I was having with somebody here in this five sensory experience. Because I remember every time he would bring my attention back, I would start to notice even more vivid detail in the furniture. And I would notice that he would appear to say things that I wasn't consciously thinking, which I also found to be very interesting, which again was happening more in how he says here, drifting off to sleep, stayed akin to sleep. So this is the exercise worth practicing. I did the exercise that was suggested in the master key system over the years. And this is something that I actually like to do, which is reverse engineer in my imagination. I mentioned in that video, I like to reverse engineer sales processes or systems. And coming from an IT and technological background, this was very helpful for me to troubleshoot and figure out where the cause of the effects were in the system that we were looking to resolve. So version two is actually the revisional process to go back and revise your day. So he says, don't judge yourself because you are the source of the thing that you are beholding. Now turn within and prune it by using these pruning shears of revision. Now this is how we do it. At the end of my day, I review my day. I don't judge it. I simply review it. I look over the entire day, all episodes, all events, all conversations, all meetings, and then I see it clearly in my mind's eye. I rewrite it. So he's suggesting to rewrite your entire day the way you would ideally want it to be, which to me, I realize upon doing this, has the same effects that I've noticed as a result of working with the invisible counsel process. 
because I noticed the changes today that were reflecting the ideas that were being discussed in the Invisible Council. So I noticed that when I have conversational-based imaginal scenes, they tend to be far more transformative than imagining myself being the person or doing the thing. I noticed that works as well. However, I relate that over more effectively to carrying with me the definite chief aim card. I've brought that up many times, which I learned from The Strangest Secret, in which you write down your definite chief aim on the card, and then if for whatever the reason you go into a different state of mind or you find yourself being overly reactive, you simply pick up the card and you read it, and it stimulates you back into that state of mind. And again, it's conversational because I'm reading it to myself. There's actual inner dialogue happening and it stimulates me back into the state of mind and into the feeling of the wish fulfilled thus bringing me back into that flow so he says i rewrite it and i make it conform to the ideal day i wish i had experienced i take scene after scene and rewrite it and having revised my day then in my imagination i relive that day the revised day and I do it over and over in my imagination until this seeming imagined state begins to take onto me the tones of reality. So for me, the seeming imaginal state began to take on the tones of reality when I noticed that Charles Hanel was saying, why is your attention going there? What's happening with your attention? Something like that and bringing it back. And I'm like, wow, that's exactly how I'd imagine the conversation to be if it happened in this five sensory experience. If I was having it with anybody, if I was having it with friends, clients, and so forth, and it was happening, it took on the tones of reality. The imaginal world went from consciously stimulating it to the subconscious mind actually filling in all the details like in a dream. He says, it seems that it's real, that I actually did experience it. Now, I resonate very deeply with this after having that experience more so than ever before. So let's read it again. I trust that... Uh, as you've been working with information, you've also been having these experiences, that level of vivid imagination. He says, it seems that it's real, that I actually did experience it. And I have found from my experience that these revised days, if really lived in imagination, will change my tomorrows. And it really does. And this is not something that is new to us. If you look back at our journey, we'll actually realize that we do imagine things before going to sleep. Many of us do. And I believe it's a good exercise to see what we imagine before we go to sleep. I actually see what is played out in the theatrical experience of life the next day and correlate it, relate it over to what we're imagining. You know, when I was growing up, my grandmother always taught me not going to sleep stressed out, frustrated, and angry. And so what I used to do was I would construct imaginal scenes, like worlds that I would go in and have experiences of how I wanted to be when I grew up, let's say. And those were the exact things that ended up happening. And it's interesting how we could forget this kind of stuff. It seems so simple, but yet it's so powerful. And, you know, that's really the essence of Neville's teachings, as we discussed in last Sunday's video, which again, I will relate to Currently, my favorite quote from him, what do you say of the I am within you? And so we commit to in imagination. And when we feel the vivid accuracy, the realness of imagination, that's how we know we have committed to it. It is experienced as we would have an experience in the five sensory experience. And you know what? We get better at it with practice. And so he says, when I meet people tomorrow that today disappointed me, they will not tomorrow, for in me I have changed the very nature of that being. And having changed him, he bears witness tomorrow of the change that took place within me. It is my duty to take this garden and really make it a garden by daily using the pruning shears of revision. So we liken mind to the garden. And every day we have the opportunity to consciously plant the seeds, the imaginal seeds, of what will one day show up in our life, every day. And this is something that has been very powerful and beneficial for me as a result of coming across this information. The power of our subconscious mind and its ability to, we could say, 
not distinguish between what's the five sensory experience or that which we see in imagination. And that is a beautiful thing. Because if we look at our life and how we express ourselves here, we'll notice that a lot of us might be a product of certain suggestions that we've been identifying with and we've been living from that premise which we have learned from the outer aspects of our life. When we realize that we have an infinite world within and we can select in our imagination, such as I did in my invisible council or such as he suggests, and have that be the reality for the moment that we do this consciously before going to sleep or in the moments where we sit down and actually imagine and visualize, as mentioned, Nikola Tesla used to do this with invention. He used to go into his imagination and treat it like a workshop. He would imagine the actual product that he was creating. He would work on it in his imagination and he would have it completely functional and working in detail in imagination. And then when he expressed it, when he created it, he said that it would always mirror exactly how it worked in his imagination. So thus, it's important for us to rekindle our connection back to our imagination. I would certainly suggest the exercises in the master key system. Many have benefited from the master key system. And I said, the reason why I found that I got the most value from the master key system was because the focus was really about attention and imagination and then allowing the subconscious mind to express the rest. So I trust you found these exercises, which one is really an exercise of practice, reverse engineering your day, and the other is actually reverse engineering your day and imagining it in the ideal way. I trust you found those to be helpful, and if you find that it's challenging to do it, do it in a way that would be engaging with you. For me, the Invisible Council works really well, and it seems to get even more interesting every time I do this. And I'm happy to share throughout these videos my experiences so that you too can be inspired to also do something similar and produce the kind of success and results that you want in your life. So let's reflect upon it and relate it over to the title, Be Conscious, Awaken from the Dream. We could say, I realize that I awaken into my imagination to construct that which I truly desire, knowing that from my imagination, all things express accordingly. I then realize through the practice, upon realization of my success and results, that the source of it all can be tracked within myself in relation to the question, what do I say of the I am within myself? I realize the importance of association to that which I truly desire. I realize that I associate, identify with, and live in my imagination from my ideal as I allow the expression via the subconscious mind to express through me, body being an expression of mind, and the five sensory experience being expression of mind, to reflect that which I saw in my imagination, which is what I truly desire and love in the spirit of harmony with all. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.